Thank you for joining me, Carl. How you Thank doing? you for having me, Candice. Yeah. Okay, how you doing? We we've been we've been trying to do this a kind of back and forth tug of war for a second there, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Mm -hmm. We made it happen. It, it took a whole it took the whole world to shut down for us to get together, huh? Isn't that something? But <laughs> it's a positive Crazy. time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, I'm joined by none other than Mr. Carl Brown, co-founder of FUBU, raised and uh, grew up in Hollis, Queens. Hollis, Queens. Hollis, Hollis Queens. Queens. Um, FUBU earned over $350 million in 1998 and is now a multi-billion dollar company on the move with continuous brands. Um, Carl went ahead and launched his commercial real estate development company with his first project, Hotel Fubu. You know, I want to know all about that. I, I was trying to research and I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to wait to get it firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little information online, but yeah, it's all up here. <laughs> I know you see, and, and that's the thing when you're talking to somebody, it's so much better when you get in like, like one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I mean? Right. Well, before we even start, mm -hmm. like, how are you doing with all this shutdown and virus and how is this affecting you? You know, I, um, I guess um, at, now that the initial shock is gone, yeah. you know, it's kind of taking it day by day and trying to take the best out of it, to make the best from it, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, you really can't really, um, you can't really, tell was going not a lot, not enough information to make any plans mm -hmm. so i'm just kind of just preparing and hoping for the best and preparing yeah. for when this thing is over that we can um get back to business listen i'm so ready to get back to business but i'm i'm enjoying the time too i'm enjoying the time so i just yeah. want to jump right in Actually, I, I think it's uh -huh. go ahead now so i think it's uh it's it's definitely a wake-up call for everybody you oh. know just um nothing like this has ever happened before and um nobody was ready for it no one knows how to react to it but right. one thing for sure is it's definitely a wake-up call to tell you that you know nothing is uh guaranteed anything can happen so be prepared for anything these days yeah it kind of makes you put life into perspective absolutely and look at where you've been but not only where you've been but where you're heading right so right. this is why i'm so excited about this conversation today because where you've been and where you've come from to who you are today is a testament, I think, to me as a business owner and to probably everyone watching it, you can do whatever you set your mind to. Right. It doesn't, nothing is impossible. Literally, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go back to the early days now. I'm, I'm taking it back to five years old. Take it way back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's take it back a little bit. So I heard that you and um, Damien were friends at five year old. How did that whole relationship come to be? Yeah, well, my my mom and dad, because I, I I didn't grow up. In, I mean, I wasn't when I was born. I lived in South Jamaica, Queens, which is okay. not far from Hollis. Right. Um, I'm, I'm from Baisley Projects. That's where we. That's where me and my mom and my wow. sister and brother lived. Mm -hmm. Um. When my mom and dad married, we they bought a house in Hollis, Queens. Okay. And I was about five years old at the time. And that's where I met Damon on, on our moving day in. Damon was at the yeah, well, at the my, fence my looking in, trying dad. to see who's moving next door to him. And um we met up and we've been friends pretty much ever since. That is so cool. Yeah, we, yeah, we've been neighbors for um since five years old and we um you know went to the same school, some of the same schools together, but we always were, were friends from then. Okay. So would you say, because I, I also, because, you know, I've, I've read a lot, so it's good that I'm getting it from the source right now. So mm -hmm. from my understanding, you went to, your mom used to drag you to work with you, with her. And mm -hmm. uh, from a young age where you thought that was punishment, talk a little bit about how that helped to prepare you for today. Well, um, um, how does I say this? Just saying. You just never know. You just never know. As you go through life, you never know what's, what lessons you're actually being learned and how these things are going to make sense later on. 
Right. Because when I when I say my when, when I work with my mother, that's really something that I didn't see how that could possibly help me in the future. Right. My mother owned two millinery shops. Um, she sold um, designer hats for women okay. and, and accessories. Mm -hmm. So me working there was the total opposite of who I was, in my opinion. You know, why, why am I in this shop every day, working in this shop and selling hats to ladies? Right. But um, she owned two shops, one in Queens and one in Brooklyn. And um, just throughout the years of just being basically being forced to learn sales and merchandising <laughs> and inventory and, right. and dealing with designers and seasons and orders, you know, all these things that I just did because I had to. Right. Everything that I learned there came into play when I, when we first started our business and I didn't know until we started doing these things. I said, hey, I remember this, you know, I used to, Oh, this is how you do it. You know, all these, all, it all makes sense. Once I've started my own, um, company with Dame and, and um, Keith and Jay. But yeah, um, yeah we start, I worked my mom's at the millinery shop um, for about, uh, about 10 years mm -hmm. and um, then decided to go on my own. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's why I always tell parents, um, don't be afraid to include your kids no matter how young they are um, yeah, in their absolutely. businesses. Yeah, because you never absolutely. know. I, um, you never know what even if they don't go into the same business, you just never know what that may spark, just being exposed to um, different things. You know, that, and that's what it comes down to, just whatever you have to give your children as far as exposure, expose them to it. You know, you never know what to, what to catch their attention and fascinate them. Right, okay. So now we're gonna fast forward. So I, I, want, I, I just, I wanna know what the conversation sound like between you and Damien, like, Let's hook up. Mm -hmm. Let's make some clothes. Let's make some hat. Like, what did that conversation look like? How did that start? Just, just how you, just how you said it. That's what it looked like. Really? <laughs> we, um, yeah, we, cause yeah, I remember, um, the clothing business was the business that took off for us. Right. We've been in business since, like I said, since kids doing things. Me and Damon, we would, um, as kids, we would, um, collect junk, junk scrap metal. Right. We had a business junk collecting scrap metal. We had a business um, cleaning windshields. Um, we, we did a lot of different things together. I mean, countless things. And um, the clothing came up, not even looking to be in the clothing business. It came up just out of, um, out of a ride that we took looking for a hat that Damon wanted to wear for the weekend. And once we picked up the hat and, and looked at it, we realized that, you know, I suggest I say we you know we could have actually made this hat. You know, we right. moved from Queens all the way uptown to get this hat. We could, we looking at it, we could actually make this hat. So Damon has some sewing experience, and he decided to give it a shot and make the hat himself. Right. And once we figured out how to make it, we decided to um decide to try to sell it. Mm -hmm. And that was um the weekend of Easter weekend of like nineteen I want to say nineteen ninety something like that. And we went out, we made about 20, 30 hats. Wow. We went out to uh, the local um, shopping area called Jamaica Avenue in Queens, and we tried to sell the hats, and we actually sold out all the hats. And that's basically the start of our clothing business. Wow. Now, was that anywhere near the Coliseum? Yeah, well, the, <laughs> yeah, that was right by the Coliseum. And funny enough, me and Damon... We we worked in the Coliseum. Really? I worked at the yeah. I worked at the popcorn stand. Well, we both worked at the popcorn stand together. And then eventually, he, <laughs> and eventually he worked at a, a sock a sock uh, a place that sold socks and and hosiery right. like right across from us. So we worked at we we were the, some of the first people to work at the Coliseum when it first opened. Okay. So we were familiar with the area, so we went there. What we we're familiar with. And we, we sold the hats and we just realized that, you know, we actually picked up some fabric, mm -hmm. we made the hat and sold it and made money. And right there, we, was, we were hooked. Look, and that's all it took was just a plan. And you were, you, I don't want to call you little hustlers, but you know, in the hood is how it starts out. You, you're selling everything. Your mind is everywhere. So you already had that entrepreneur spirit in you guys. So, okay. Oh, you no, no. By all, by, you can use Use the word hustler because that's what we were. I mean, honestly, we would figure out to sell yep. anything. You know, we just tried to try to do anything that that made sense at the time, and uh, we tried. Like I said, it's that's exactly what you say. You wake up every morning trying to think of ways to, yeah. to make a dollar, and that's basically how we started. 
Yeah, and look at how far that dollar has gone. Okay, so we're gonna yeah, we, our first investment was um our first investment was like thirty bucks. You know, maybe maybe a little less. I know Damon had about eighteen bucks. I put in the rest, and we bought our first um um right. bit of fabric to make the hats. That's how our business started. Wow, like literally nothing, but just an idea. Right, just an idea. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, obviously, it, that's where it starts. It starts up with an idea and right. uh, and just the gall to feel like you can do better. Right. Okay, so now let's fast forward a little further. So you have the idea. Okay. You guys are, you have your hat and, and you want to grow from there. How do you go from hat to multi-million dollar mm -hmm. company? Like what? That, that's a big switch, you know? It's good, okay, so many people have the dream, right? And they have a plan and they mm -hmm. have a product because I'm, you know, I'm going to testify a little bit. I spoke to you a couple of times, remember, about my brand. And mm -hmm. at the time I was dealing right. with CVS and you scared me, I'm not going to lie. You scared me. <laughs> but you gave really good insight <laughs> because I don't think people understand what goes into that? So now that you have the hat, you have the idea, what was your next move? Sell more hats. Yeah. We didn't think, like, we, we figured, let me put it this way. We had no big grand plan right. to build a multi-million dollar company. We were happy we can eventually open a store and be able to sell clothes and clothing out of the store. You know, right. we, what we, what we did know is this hat sold and we're going to keep selling it until it doesn't <laughs> sell anymore. <laughs> no, that was the plan. But in doing that, you know, we started to, you know, figure out how to keep the business going on okay. because at that time we, yes, we did sell hats, but once the summer came, we didn't, you know, we couldn't sell the hats anymore. They were kind of right. like um, not as not as popular. Right. So we started selling other items. Um, we started selling these water guns that are real popular and these little short sets that we get from um, the uh, wholesalers. So we basically just started selling merchandise out of Damon's van. Um, the hats kept being the best seller, so okay. we constantly had we constantly had those in stock. But right. we just kept, we, at that point we were selling anything that we thought would catch someone's eye on the street and they would right. buy it, you know, um, they would buy it on the spot. So um, that's what we did. We, we kind of circled around the East Coast, going to different functions and conventions mm -hmm. and um, freak nicks and all kind of, you know, places right. where people would congregate. And as we did that throughout the, throughout the uh, months and years, we started to build a, a fan, like, like kind of a fan base. People would kind of right. look for us when they go to certain functions. You didn't have social media where they can follow you. Right. They catch you at the next. They catch you at the next function. Yeah. And uh, we start to build a like a, a really strong clientele that way. That's awesome because, yeah, you're right. At that time, there was no social media, and now social media is everywhere. So, can you imagine what you would have done back then with social media now? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I, we we, we had those conversations, but sometimes yeah. I believe that it would have it might have hindered us. We might yeah. have not have been to these functions. We may not have went and, and been face to face with our consumers. We may have just focused on getting followers and things of that nature. Yeah. So I don't, I know we would have used it as an instrument, as a tool, but I, I'm glad it wasn't around because it made us do more and be more creative in how we're going to communicate with our consumer. Wow. So that, that's really interesting. Um, cause I can understand what you mean by that. Cause on social media, your, your mindset is, yeah, I need to build more. I need to build more followers rather than the hands-on is really missing nowadays. Everything is social media. So you're, you're not physically touching your client. You're not physically, you know what I mean? Right. Um, that does right. make a, that makes a big difference. And that's pretty interesting that you said it makes that. a huge difference. It's a lot more work. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more, it's a lot more intense. You just can't sit around in your pajamas and press like and send right. and follow and all those things. Right. But um, oh, in the long run, I think it's um, you you uh, I think it takes you, it gives you a lot longer 
longevity and a lot and a lot more loyalty when people can when people meet you face to face. Right. And okay, so that that's huge. That's huge. Um, I hope everyone takes that because I'm constantly saying we're so out of. I always wonder, like, if social media was to just go down, like, just just go. Like, look, think about how many businesses. The possibility. Look where we at now. Gone. Right. Right. Completely. Yeah. So it's it's a great platform. Don't get me wrong, because we use it as well. But uh, we know from experience that um, not it's a it's a tool that should be used, but not depended right. upon. Right. So we use it for what it is, but we know that our our strength and our longevity is going to come through our interaction with, with our personal interaction with our consumer. Right. That makes all the difference. So now we're going to move, because I'm taking this mm -hmm. thing in steps. So now we're going to move back forward a little bit yeah, take more. Take your time. Okay. So I heard the coolest story about uh, LL Cool J. Now, uh -huh. I know when I was, because I lived in Queens. When we came from Jamaica, we went to um, England first, and then we went to Queens. So I was in um, Flushing, Queens before going out okay. to Brooklyn. I went to school out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I was, I grew up in Queens, you know, we, we probably passed, cross path Hillcrest High School, John Bound High School. I mean, I don't know why my Yeah, we had to. I, I know we did. I know we did at some point, but it's okay. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> it's okay. We're here. <laughs> so it's funny because at that time, at, I used to hang out at the Coliseum, right? And that's around the time, okay. I, think, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Rock the Bells came out, you know, I forgot which song it was. And he was wearing the big gold, remember the big gold rope chain? And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So I wanted one too. I wanted one too. So I used to mm -hmm. go to the Coliseum. We all did. <laughs> Oh my God. And I used to get, um, I don't know if you remember the old time gold teeth, like the first, it wasn't like the push up. It was like the flap. Like, you, <laughs> I thought I was cute. Just don't, don't judge me. Don't oh, judge me. well, I kind of, I kind of remember. I never wore gold teeth, but I, I kind of remember what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. But I say that to fast forward. Cause I remember when FUBU came out. I remember when FUBU, went, I had it had mm -hmm. the FUBU sweatshirt, and I don't even think I had mine a girl. I think it was my brother's, and I killed that sweatshirt, killed mm. that hoodie. But what I found interesting in the story that I heard is, was it LL Cool J that you got it into his hands? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a. I'll tell you the story real quick. Yes, because I know it's that a this story. is a lesson. This. This is probably a lesson. This could be a lesson to a lot of people too. Okay. We we grew up with LL Cool J. You know, Farmers yeah. Boulevard. I'm, I li we lived on 102nd. Yeah. LL LL lived on Ilion, right up about five blocks up. So we grew up with him. Yeah. Um, pretty much as kids. So when he took off as far as his career, yeah. You know, we we watched it from a distance. We you know right. we wasn't part of his inner circle, but we watched it from a distance. That was a neighborhood hero. And, um, but we, we never really asked him for anything as, no, we just kind of, Hey, what's up, LL? Yo, congratulations. Right. We hang out once in a while. He would invite us to certain shows. If he's in New York and we go to the shows and be backstage, you know, what, right. what kids want to do. Um, but we never had a reason to do business with him. You know, right. it just wasn't, we just felt that, that we, we didn't have anything to offer. So when we, when we started when we started um, getting a little traction with our clothing, when we got past hats, we were selling t-shirts and sweatshirts and things of that nature. We talked to him one day. He said, um, you know, what you guys got to do, you guys need more exposure. You guys got to, you guys got to find somebody that can get you some more exposure. Right. So we said, okay, yeah, that's true. We got, you know, we went back and thought, we said, who can we get? And we said, you know what? <laughs> Right around the corner, he's right out of the corner for us, from us. Right. So we went to him and we asked him, "Listen, we we want we want you to wear your our clothes in the next video and right. you know help us out and things of that nature." He said, "Okay, let me let me see what you guys got." So we showed them uh, showed them our first samples and things that we wanted to put out, and he and he totally hated them. Like he told us it, it, to him in his personal opinion, 
They look horrible. Wow. <laughs> and we, and, but the thing about it is, instead of taking, instead of taking that the bad way, right. we listened to his criticism, we listened yeah. to his critiques, and we went back and tried to fix, fix what he thought was the problem. Right. And um, it took a while for us to get to that point to where he would wear something that fit his, with, with his, um, his, um, I guess his level of quality, whatever, what have you. But in that, in that process, it helped us step our game up. Mm -hmm. And we, we got to the point where he would wear something. And once he wore something, he said, okay, meet me at my grandmother's house Saturday at 3 p.m. And I'm going to wear, I'm going to take a picture with your, with your clothes on. <laughs> so we get, we, we get there at 3, matter of fact, maybe a little earlier, 2.30. Because he said he has to be at the airport. He has to leave for the airport soon. Uh -huh. So we got there early. I don't think at that time, I don't think, I think in his business, when you tell somebody to do something, right. they usually don't follow through. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of entertainers, a lot of people, they depend on you not following through because, right. you know, they gave you your shot, you didn't show up, and now they, yeah. they don't have, they, have, they can, they can kind of write you off. Yeah. But we did show up. We did have the clothing. And I don't think, from the look at his face, I don't think he was prepared for that. <laughs> wow. So, so, so not, not to bring that bad on him, but like I said, we were very raw. We were still kids. We didn't, he knew a lot more than us because he's been in the industry a little longer. So he yeah. kind of knew, he kind of knew what a finished product looked like. Right. We were still in the beginning stages. So with that being said, he seemed a little reluctant to take the picture, but he took the picture. Okay. He kept his word, he took the picture. And we took that picture and and placed it into the magazines like the writer magazines, right. the hip, you know, the hip hop magazines that were yeah. um, out at that time. And that's what really started our mail order business. That's because awesome. he was a he was an internationally known face. We had his picture that went for our clothing line and we used him as our spokesperson, unofficial spokesperson in those ads. Right. And we, we started building up a um, a mail order business that way. And that kind of got us more, um, a lot more exposure. You know what I love about that story is the fact that you could have taken the fact that he didn't like it the first time and do what a lot of people usually do. And at that, at yeah, that point. your attitude and be like, yeah, I forget yeah. it. Yeah, at that point mm -hmm. is when they would have been like, forget you, you know. He's a hater, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and that's why it's important mm -hmm. to be careful um, how you conduct yourself business-wise. Everybody's not going to like everything, but I always see it as an opportunity to go up. You know what I mean? It's not an Absolutely. opportunity to stop it. If you, if you take in the information and, you know, you, you may not be able to use all information, right. but take what's useful out of it and build on it, you know. And we did, like I said, we didn't take it personal. We right. could have. I mean, we may have took it personal inside, internally, right. but we knew that our goal was to get a shirt on him. So right. if he needed us to change the color or change some, some things on it and make some adjustments, if that's what it took and that's within our power to do it, then that's our job. And um, that, that got him that, – that, that's, that was the start of our business relationship with him. There was yeah. no money exchange. It was kind of a favor. Well, you know, we, yeah. we used what we had. We, he gave us what we needed, and we ran with it. Right. And then later on, we got into a bigger situation with him. That's awesome. I, every time I see that, it's I just... I can tell you that story. I can tell you that story, too. When we oh, no, you're going to tell me. We got time. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, it's different when you because, have a, Like I said, that was, that was a... <laughs> that, was the start of, that was the start of our business relationship. He didn't know it yet. <laughs> but that was the start of our business relationship. Right. <laughs> so fast forward, when yeah. we finally, I don't, I don't want to go too far ahead, but when we finally uh, struck a major distribution deal and we started generating some real money, because mm -hmm. our, our goal, our deal with him beginning was, he said, you guys, if you guys make it, I want, I want to be a partner. I want, to, I, want some, I want some shares in the business. Okay. So it was no writing, it was no contract, kind of like the, you know, shake hands, shake a right. handshake agreement. And he, I think he kind of just went his way after that. But remember that. <laughs> and once we got a, a, a really good situation, right. we came back to him and, um, and started, made things official. 
Mm-hmm. I love it because you already had him pegged out. You're like, okay, one, we have the shirt on you. You don't know it yet, but you are the spokesperson. Like you are a part of this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in. You're already. You've already in. <laughs> whether you whether you know it or not. <laughs> right. Right. And we melt that picture for for <laughs> two years. <laughs> that picture was two and but, through, um, two through. That's good. So talk yeah, to he me. gave us what we needed, you know. Talk to us about what that dis- first distribution deal looked like, as far as because you have so many people right now mm-hmm. that have products, right, and. Uh, they're they're ready to go to that next level and they're ready to do that next thing and they're ready to get these deals what would you tell them to have in place to make sure that they're ready to do that because there's a certain level of preparedness from saying i have a product and now i want to go into walmart i know it doesn't happen that way (laughs) (laughs) no absolutely not you know what it is not i tell people it's not it's not your it's not your decision or your doing that makes it your time. Right. What you gotta do is do the work and your time will meet with your work, with your effort. Yeah. Like we didn't we didn't put a date on when we was gonna be we, we had no plans. Well we had at that point we did have some desires to be in some certain stores, Macy's right. and things of like that. But we had no like we we need to be there by next year. Right. What we did know is we need to do the work so they can notice us. Okay. If they notice us, you know, we'll we'll be there. Let's not let's not let's not get there just to be there. Let's be there because we want it there. So what we did was we always tried to get to the point to where we attracted the right situation. Right. If that makes sense. So yeah. not call Macy's, but do so much work to where Macy's would look for us. Ooh. So and that's what we did when it came to our distribution situation. We um we got by the time we got a distributors distributors looking for us, we didn't have to go into we didn't have to look for them. Like let me give you an example. We knew that um the magic show that happens in Vegas comes along right. every every year. Okay. Now this is something that we learned as we as you you know, as you in the industry you start learning okay. about different events and different things that go on. We found out about this so called magic show. No, we didn't know. Those we knew is a magic show. It happens in Las Vegas. All the clothing lines be there. Right. And we like you okay, by God, we got to be there. Yeah. We we got to be there. You know, no, no matter what, we have to be there. You know, what we gonna do when we get there? Who knows? <laughs> but we got to be there. Right. Because all the all the big guys are there. So let's um do what we can. So we didn't have very we didn't have very much. Mo- we didn't have a lot of money. Right. But um, we did have some access to some plane tickets because Damon's moms worked for American Airlines. So we got okay. some buddy passes. We saved up some money and got one room in the Mirage Hotel that we all shared. Right. And what we did was we said, we can't afford to be on the floor at the Magic Show. Let's send out invites to all the stores that we would like to be in. That we, oh. If we can make a wish list, right. let's send invites to all these stores. Let them know that we're going to be at the Magic Show at the Mirage Hotel. Right. And see what happens. So we sent all these invites out. We never got any replies. So it's not like email where they can reply back. We right. actually mailed these letters out. Right. You just passing <laughs> it. Didn't know, yeah. We didn't know what to expect. So we eventually got to, to the magic show. Mm-hmm. And we we set up the room. We had, um I, I know I had the bathroom. Damon had the one of the beds. He, paid, he had the clothes laid out. Keith had a section of the room. So we had our little sections laid out where we're going to show the clothing. Right. And we just sat there hoping somebody would come see us. Wow. And um, slowly but surely, one store from um, um, Harlem came through. And he said, I heard you guys were up here. Uh, but I wasn't sure. This FUBU, right? We said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he came. He looked at the clothing. He, um, he told his told this guy to go get some other friends that own clothing stores. He said, yo, go get so-and-so, Middle Eastern guys. Yeah. So he went in off and got him. He said, yeah, we've been looking for you guys. And we was like, we said, oh, yeah, really? He said, yeah. He said, all the kids asking for your clothing. 
Wow. You say, Cause you, you don't know this, you, you're doing the work, but you never know what's, what you're putting out there. You don't know yeah. how it's being received because you just don't have that kind of feedback back then. Right. So my, what I'm trying to say is if you're doing the work, you may not see it right away, right. but trust me, is someone's going to notice it if you're doing the work. And yeah. all the work that we did up to that time, we were doing, at that time, we was doing a lot of music videos. We were doing a lot of product placement. We were doing, doing everything that we could in our power to do to get exposure for our clothing. But all you, all you knew it was, it was, we knew it was on the video, but no one could hit you back and say, hey, I saw you, I saw you on the video, yeah. a couple of neighborhood friends, but you didn't, you didn't know the world was seeing it. Right. You knew the world was seeing it, but you weren't getting no feedback. And but once we got to that magic show, all the work that we put into those two or three years before we got to the magic show, it all manifested itself at that show. Everybody was looking for us. Every single store that sells sportswear was looking for us at that show. And they all came to that one room mirage and wrote orders for our, for our clothing at that day, that, that weekend. And we, wrote, we walked away with close to $300,000 in sales. Look, I'm so inspired right now. I'm trying to think like what <laughs> what trade show do I need to be a part of? Oh my God, you know. But that's the that's the key. It's really just showing up. You know, it's not about being perfect and having having all your shit together. It's really just putting yourself in a position where where right. something can happen. But if you right. sit around in this then we what if we didn't go that year? You know, what if I put I'm my arrogance tells me we would have still made it because we was just so we was so intense and so working right. so hard at it. But it would have been a it could have been a totally different story if we didn't go that year. But, but we just felt that we had to be there. We had to show up and see what happens. I feel like that's the difference though between a love for what you do, a passion rather than someone mm -hmm. who's just doing something for coins. There's a huge difference. Um, right, right. I think, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I think when you really find that thing that you love, you don't care who's watching. You don't care what you look like, how you sound. It's coming from <laughs> such a big place of passion that the world can see it. You know what I mean? So right, you're creating right, the, the right. demand, and that's what you did. Right, absolutely. And don't get me wrong, there's been some days to where, like, we used to, especially in the beginning when we, because we still fresh, kind of not too long out of high school. Right. So we still got those, you know, the, the clicks and the, you want to still yeah. be cool and things of that nature. So stand on Jamaica Avenue with hats in our hand wasn't the coolest thing to do. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Look, you were standing. Um, you were standing with the soundtrack guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so you have girlfriends. I mean, not girlfriend, but girls that you like would walk past, and so it was still that peer. It's still that peer yeah. thing where you felt like you know, today you know you, you felt <laughs> like you should have been. You wasn't the coolest guy on the block. Right, you know. right. But um, so sometimes you got to fight through that. You won't yeah. be the coolest. Sometimes you yeah. won't be. You know, you you gonna look, be looked you gonna be looked down on sometimes. Right. You know, people gonna look at you like you're crazy sometimes. Yeah. But um, you gotta fight through that. As long as you, like you said, as long as you had that passion, and I think for us, we had a, such a tight circle to where right. we just fed off each other's energy. Even when things weren't looking good, mm -hmm. we kind of fed off each other, which made a it made things a lot easier. That I'm, I look, I I know that everybody's watching inspired. I know I'm inspired completely. So. You basically you're saying the same. Even though we're living in a social media world now, right? Things are really different as opposed to when you guys started. You guys had the real authenticity of work. You know what I mean? Of touching people, of getting yourselves out there. Right? Right now, it's 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 a flick of the wrist. You know, it's it's easier. It's a little bit different. Things have changed. If you were doing what you're doing in this age now like let's say for instance at that time you had all the social media means to go by what would you have done different because you you had to work it different then because the availability of social media wasn't there but how would you use that platform now mm. I, I guess <laughs> i would use it like everybody else you know um uh 
but still touching clients, but still <laughs> out there. Yo, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, like when you like, let's say now you can build an Instagram page and you can make it look like the coolest thing in the world. Right. You know, if, if, if you're selling one hat, you know, yeah. you can make that hat look cool. It can be about yeah. a nice background. It can, it can look great. But there's no way to make a hat in your hand standing in the middle of the street look cool. You just can't do it. You, It's got to be. It's got to be bigger. Than, it's got to be more than that. It's, it's got. It's, there's no fluff to that. Yeah. You, you you spend your money on inventory. It's sitting in the bag right next to you. You got to turn that money over. You right. have to sell those hats. Yeah. They to even have a chance of tomorrow. You know what I mean? Okay. So it it I think for us putting yourself in a position where there's no matter how small the situation is at the time, we always put ourselves in a position where we had to. Either, either succeed, or or it's all over, you know, right. or, or or pack up, you know. We never we never played this. We we rarely ever played this safe back then. Right. Um. And I think the internet gives you a chance to to front and make it look like you're doing something, but it's it's not real a lot of times. And I I get I get concerned about that because, um. I, I just this is it's not something I'm used to, you know. What I mean, yeah. I, I'm 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 working at it and, and getting used to it, yeah. but it's not something I'm used to. I'm used to seeing, I'm used to, you know, making things happen and not just create making it look like it's happening. Right. So we would, I we like I said, we use it now, and it is a help to communicate. And that your customers can contact you and and voice their opinions, and it's good to have that kind of connection. But um, if I I think the the people that will that will be most successful in this new age of marketing and business will be the ones that can kind of do a 50-50. You know, um, be out be out in the streets as much as you are on the on the web, and right. you should see a lot more success than your average your average um, competitor. That's good. That's really good. So now that we're, okay, so we're in stores. We're in Macy's. We're we're in we're, we're everywhere now. Fubu is is the national brand for us by us we feel really proud we have this brand this this is we're, we're there what i found interesting now i want you to talk to me about is the hotel fubu so i see i saw hotel okay. fubu and fubu phones yeah we have fubu well let me let me let me back up a little bit yeah. <laughs> because like you said we we went through the 10 years straight nice right. 10 year run which is even for for urban brand, that's a that's a really good run when it Huge. comes to fashion. Fashion doesn't last long in the right. urban on the urban side. But with that being said, we um, you know, as the, with everything, we were our brand was so connected to the '90s that uh, when the '90s wasn't around anymore, you know, we were left behind. You know, kids wanted something different. They didn't want to look like their parents, so they moved uh -huh. on to different looks and different brands. And but for us, we made a lot of choice. We made a lot of decisions because we Damon kind of one thing I can tell about Damon is he saw it coming. He was like, "Listen, you know this 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 is not going to be here. We got to make right. some changes before the before that um before that before that um curve." So we started to invest in other businesses at that time. We invested mm -hmm. in um, the Kuji brand. We invested in um, Ooh, I the, um the the mm -hmm. hmm? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we invested in Fubu Mobile. Um, we, we, we made some pretty deep, some, not all good investment, but we started, we started looking for other avenues to, to explore. Yeah. So once things start to settle down with Fubu, we started to focus on other, other avenues. Right. Then we got the, um, you know, he got the Shark Tank show. Um, like I said, we started the Fubu Mobile. Um, and we, we, we began to just venture out because by that time, FUBU was, as far as the consumer's concerned, the name was a lot bigger and meant a lot more than that. Oh, yeah. Gold. Forced by us is something that, it's a phrase that everyone uses now. Right. Um, and, it's, um, and we knew that, so we said, no, let's, let's move into other avenues of business that doesn't have to do with clothing. Right. And, um, and that's what you're starting to see now. So here we go. All right. So this is lesson number 100, really, because now you have to stay relevant with the times that are continuous to change. 
So you're literally saying that people have to learn how to switch so that they don't get left behind. And that's exactly, essentially what you guys did because FUBU is such a huge brand right now. And I see that you also have new products. So it's mm -hmm. constantly emerging into so much more. Um, before we go into FUBU, I think Hotel, let's talk about the mm -hmm. re-emergence of the brand itself because I'm seeing some real cool outfits that you got going on there. And even for women. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, um, it's, there's a, what we decided to do was not to sell the brand like right. a lot of people thought we did. Right. Uh, we didn't sell the brand. We, what we did was we kind of put in hibernation and, and not force it on people, but wait for the time to where there was a market that wanted it again. Okay. So if, if anyone knows that fashion, they know fashion always comes back around. Right. You know, it's, it's a cycle. And it's usually between a six and 10 year cycle. Right. So um, we waited for the time where we felt that there, there was a market out there for it. We started, the internet kind of told us when that was. Right. A lot of kids were pulling out their dad's old shirts and, <laughs> and, 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 and they, they started looking for, you know, um, right. vintage clothing. Right. And uh, we started to feed on that and, 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 and talk to the influencers and, and right. you know, just try to build on it. Not like, a, not force it on people, but build right. on it as it grows. And um, yeah, so we, we getting a little, we got a little momentum now with the clothing side. Right. Um, kids are really appreciating the, the stuff that we did in the past and um, they're looking for new stuff now. So we kind of, we're not pouring it on, but we are, we're feeding it, we're feeding it as the, as the um, demand grows. Okay. So that's what you're seeing now. We got um, new distribution partners. We have um, FUBU ladies and men's sportswear back in the United States I love um, coming it. back this fall. Yeah. Uh, we have um, suits, we have watches, we have um, um, shoes and sneakers. We rebrand, we, 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 we redesigning re, um, our sneakers, going to relaunch those. So we got a lot going on now. Right. That, um, and we're older now. So we, we, we kind of, um, we're more in control of, um, you know, our, um, <laughs> our, our vices. You laugh and, when you say that. I was <laughs> <laughs> we don't party as hard as what? we used to. <laughs> I was so going to say more, something, but. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the impulses so, um, so, are, are a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I wanted to say. The impulses are different. So we don't we don't want to we don't have we don't have the desire to, to, yeah. to rent 407, 407, uh, 747 jets and things like that. Yeah, nature. yeah. So we're we're more focused on the business and right. uh, we're really building the infrastructure that I think will last a really long time. That's awesome. I, I'm happy to hear that. I know as far as um, the women's clothes, and I love your women's line. Um, I've been looking mm -hmm. at that, and I know that. You know, once we're done, because I call this a hiatus, you know, everything that's going on right now. Um, once we are back and we're taping from Afro TV, I'd love to see the ladies. And, you know, we do a mm. show in the FUBU hoodie. You know, we have to talk about that and try to get that going. <laughs> now, you, you, you're going to like it. We, 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 we coming out real big. We're going to do um, Fashion Week. We're going we gonna to do some really big things with the FUBU ladies line. We actually... Um, Good. Going through designs now and dealing with our manufacturers as we speak. So we, we yeah. going to make it really special, not um, really special, really special. And we can talk about covering it for you when that time comes. Um, so now mm -hmm. let's kind of segue into Hotel FUBU. Launched okay. in what, 2017? Well, we, we started the process of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Went through a few hiccups as businesses do. Right. But we finally found the right um, locations and um, development partners uh, this year. Okay. So let me step back real quick. Hotels have always been a um, interest of mine. Even really? as a kid, if I wasn't in, if I wasn't in fashion, I'd probably been into the hospitality business. I was always interested in the um, operating of the hotels, right. the design, and the you know, just the food and right. beverage and the, the things that make a hotel operate well. Um, and I always wanted to get in that business eventually after FUBU. Right. But, um, you know, things happen. You kind of put things off. 
And yeah. I told myself this last couple of years that this is the time I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make okay. it happen. And I just happened to want to use the FUBU brand. So I, I um, struck a deal with my partners to use the name. I, I think that it, it. I think that the name just means so much to so many people. I think it fits it good does. in the hospitality business. It does. And um, and we found the right. I found the right development partners, and we are launching the brand. We're launching the Fubu, our first hotel in Midtown Manhattan, Times Square. Mm. Uh, we have a project under construction now in Brooklyn downtown. Wow. And we're working on a project in uh, Miami and Jackson, Mississippi. <clears throat> so um, our first uh, hotel was scheduled to be open this um this spring. But um, obviously, what, what's going on now is probably going to be pushed back to the holidays. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll be, we have our first hotel open by um, the end of this year. When, where are you opening the first one? Which location? Times Square. Times Square. Times Square. Okay. Mm-hmm. In Manhattan. So, yeah, I, I'm going to be looking for my invite <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> oh, no, no. We're going to have a big <laughs> launch. We're going we're gonna to do it really, really big. And I'm going to invite all the... All all the people that's been in business with us and have relations with us um, for Good. throughout the years. And we're going to make it a real special kind of a reunion type of thing. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. I mean, FUBU brand is a brand that we, we grew up with, you know, we grew up with you guys, you know, I, I was rocking the sweatshirt. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's so amazing to see where you are now and, and not, and not, you guys are not even stopping. So Damien is, doing Shark Tank, we see him, you know, every week telling businesses, Mm -hmm. yeah, I got you, or no, I don't, (laughs) you know what I mean? What part of, (laughs) yeah, and that's a whole nother conversation, you know, off the, off of here, but yeah, (laughs) but it's all right. I see him, you know, doing his thing, and it's good because he comes from right. generally a place of business that he can mentor those people in and he can help them. You know what I mean? So when you see it coming from something right, right, that, right, right. from that that's been through it, it makes more sense than it coming from someone who hasn't even walked down that avenue. So my, right, right. my the good thing about him is he, he he's coming, he's coming, he's came into his own, but people right. look at him like he um <laughs> like he's changed, but they don't realize He's always been that guy. He's always been a business-minded guy. Yeah. And um, even when the even and I'm a, I'm a, this is important. When I tell people all the time. It's like, especially as teenagers. Yeah. I had a choice to hang out with Damon, Keith, and Jay, mm-hmm. or hang out with some other not so yeah. good um, options. And one thing I liked about them, even as young young men, teenagers. I felt that um, they were trying to do something, trying to do something um, positive or something right. constructive, something that you know, I fed off of them. I, every time right. I was around them, I felt like anything was possible. Right. And um, you really got to find those people in your life to where those are the people that you circle around. You may not be in business together, but just being around a group of people that are thinking and dreaming and, mm. and, and trying to figure things out and, and, you know, just thinking bigger than what's around yeah. you, it, it 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 really made a big difference in my life. You know what I mean? So, yeah. if anyone's out there that's that's looking to do get out of their situation or, or be better than what their current situation is, who you surround yourself with is is like is key to everything. You know, it's it really is. key. I'd rather be by myself if I don't have a group of people that's just thinking big. You know, right. and I, I just I'm, every day I'm grateful that I had some friends like that still friends to this day, but I'm just grateful that I found as small as we were thinking back then, at that time it was big, you know, right. and I'm just grateful that I was able to just identify some kids in my neighborhood that were, you know, headed in the right direction. Because yeah, I could have easily been on some, you know, just in much in a much worse position. Yeah, because essentially who you're surrounded by helps to determine, I think, your success. Because if you're not around the right people, it's just not going to happen, you know? Um, Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. One of my co-hosts, Sandy Laborde, she has this saying that she says, you know, most people, when they make it, we want them to send the elevator back down, right? Mm -hmm. So... Mm-hmm. Who are you sending the elevator back down for? Oh man, <laughs> you would you would literally you would literally have to 
I don't know, go on my Facebook page and, and make that a question on there. Because you know what it is? And this is a good and bad thing, I guess. We never made a big deal out of things that we done, I guess. Yeah. I guess, um, um, what's that, charitable-wise? And well, I don't want to call it know. charity. Yeah. I, I'm not going <laughs> to call it charity. Of course, let me see what I think. No, no FUBU did for us that we was able to do for other people is create opportunities. Good. There's so many people that work yeah. for our company either now or in the past that would have never have even thought of working for a fashion house in, in, wow. in, in their life. Yeah. And we've, we've taken people that we knew that didn't have the education right. or the experience, but we knew that they had something that yeah. we can use in our business. If, they give, if given the opportunity, they would excel. And we gave so many guys and women an opportunity to, to get a start in life to where now they're executives at other companies, they're marketing mm -hmm. executives, they're, they're, they, got their own, they got their own businesses. They just, right. I mean, I call the guy, for example, there's a guy that worked with Damon and Red Lobster. I, I won't say his name, but um, we always knew he's a smart guy. Right. Trustworthy, smart guy. If given an opportunity, he can do anything. Yeah. Uh, Damon gave him a job back when he'd had no experience, but he put him in sales. Mm -hmm. This guy sells so much in sales now. We 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 wanted to do a a Puma collaboration, and guess who's executive of sales there? He at is at this at this time. He is. He is. So it's yeah. it's things like that that you can't really put a, a number on, and you don't want to like no put it out there like it's because. That's what I think FUBU is, you know, it creates opportunities for people that wouldn't necessarily have that opportunity. They don't yeah. have that inside track the way a lot of other people have from their families and from other connections that they have, that they grew up with. But uh, we, we, we have that connection that I see that and I want to right. make that bigger. I want to make that into the hotel business. I don't want to make people come into the hotel business and think that <clears throat> I love it. Um, they, they are changing sheets and that's that's the only option they, there's yeah. no other opportunity i want to make sure that there's opportunities there to where if you want them yeah. and you apply yourself you know they're there for you you can they, they you you don't have to be here if you don't want to you don't have to be in this position all your life if you don't want to be mm -hmm. and i think um as we grow our company we that's the culture we like to create that's the culture we have created and right. i think that's the greatest thing we can possibly give to people is an opportunity so now that you've done all that and you're continuing to, the market has changed so much, right? So clothing yeah, is, there's so many different brands. There, there are so many different people that have come up. How do you maintain and stay relevant in such a change in time right now, especially when social media is a huge, huge, huge factor? Um, it's literally close a lot of clothing companies right we see them all the time this place is closed down that because everything is so accessible yeah. um on internet how do you stay how do you maintain that level and stay there you know because you guys are there and you continue to stay there what does that look like well the main thing you want to do is be yourself you know right. continue to be yourself Continue to be yourself mm -hmm. and um, don't try to please everybody. I mean, right. capture your market, um, uh, give them what they expect of you right. and, and, and let anyone that gravitates for you, welcome them in, but don't chase everything. You know, yeah. we, we, when we started made that decision to come back into business with the FUBU brand, there's other people that oh, make these because yeah. so-and-so is doing this and this, this group is doing this. Listen. We are who we are, you know what I mean? Yeah. So embrace that and be the best at that. Right. And capture your market and and do what you can to keep them activated. You know what I mean? Don't try to be everything to everybody. If you can so do that well, you, 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 you'll be okay. So basically stay true to yourself, stay true to your brand. Don't get lost trying to change who you are, what you're doing for everyone around you. Right, right. Because yeah. you, you can't. You you'll just be you'll you'll be known as a yeah. as a follower and a. Right. I'll, I'll use other words, but you don't you don't <laughs> things that you don't want to be. 
Right. So just be be true to your brand. Yeah. Um, be who you are, and um, and and really give your consumer that appreciates what you what you have to offer. Give them the highest cut, highest level of customer service, the highest quality of goods, and um, you'll be around a long time. I yeah. think of Polo. You think of all these long term brands that have been around. They haven't changed much throughout the years. Right. But, well, but, but what they do is they're good at what they do. They're consistent. They're consistent. Consistent. My goodness, I can't believe an hour went by so fast. Like, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. let you go. <laughs> we we got we to gotta do this again. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that I have some questions. So I'm going to look on my phone and see. Can you answer a couple of them before you? Well, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's do a part two. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> okay, we'll definitely do a part two. We'll make sure to schedule it um, because the information okay. that you gave today is just, yeah, spot on and valuable to all extent. So we'll definitely have to do a follow up. Yes, do it. let's do a part two. You okay. get the questions. We'll do that. Maybe we'll do that before the um, uh, before before we before we can go outside again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Now that now that you're stuck at home, I know how to chase you down. Trust me when I tell you. Yeah, you caught me down, right? I know how to find you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I appreciate this time. Cara, I want to thank you so much. Um, thank you for doing this. Thank you for being a part of it. We'll go ahead and schedule it, take some questions later on, and answer them as we go. But I want to just thank you for your time. You are amazing. Continue to just show us how to do it, you know? Thank you. Thank you, Candace. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. Yeah. All right. Signing off. We'll, we'll make sure uh, number two, we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, dog. Take Bye. care. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.